my colleague uh, Lalropi, uh, she will uh, uh, formally she will introduce him, and uh, uh, I don't want to st uh, st uh, stand in between uh, him and uh, the audience for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, thank Lalropi. Hello, sir. Good, very good afternoon to you, sir Pati. Uh, let me yes. Let me formally introduce you to the group. Uh, thank you for uh, being, a, I mean, a resource person for today uh, uh, evening's afternoon session. Sir Pati is a professor in the Department of Commerce, Nehu, like uh, Sir Joyti had mentioned, and uh, he is an MCOM, MPhil, LLB, and PhD from Utkal University. He has a teaching experience of 25 years, and Sir has uh, Sir area of interest is finance, especially banking and microfinance. Sir is like Sir Joyti had mentioned, he is a current Dean School of Economics, Management and Information Science since September 2020. And <clears throat> Sir is, uh, uh, Sir was the head of Department of uh, Commerce and used to be a member BOS uh, Commerce Department, Sikkim University. And he was a member B uh, BOS Board of Research Studies, School Board, Academic Council and Univer University Committee, all Nehu. And uh, Sir had, published several books and research papers, and Sir won the best professors in financial management 2013 by the National Business News, News Channel, now ET, and Sir also won the best business academic of the year, BBAY award 2009 by All India Commerce Association. And also Sir had won, again, I mean, uh, in 2007, best business academic of the year award by All India Commerce Association again. We are very, uh, I mean, we are very privileged to have you uh, this evening, sir. And again, I would like to mention that sir had currently supervised eight PhD scholars. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today afternoon. Uh, you can take your time now, sir. Okay, thank you very much for uh, uh, speaking about me, all this thing, but uh, I hope I will be useful. That is my objective, whatever is there. <laughs> they are just ornamental thing. So I hope I will be useful to the program and to all the participants. So, uh, and uh, I got a message from Professor Jyoti Kumar that uh, here our participants will not directly interact through audio, but uh, I will request them that they are free to uh, send their chat uh, in between. Whenever they like, they can send their chat. Absolutely, there is uh, no problem with that. Uh, so. Uh, I will just uh, talk about uh, some of the things which are uh, in our uh, domain right now that uh, EGC has applied uh, come across uh, different criteria of uh, promotion and recruitment and one of the criteria is uh, good quality uh, research apart from our um, whatever teaching experience we have uh, now the publication should conform to a certain standard that has uh, been started from 2010 onwards. And slowly, slowly, if you observe that we have been into a domain where now certain uh, parameters are being framed by UGC. And uh, under that parameter, we have uh, two categories of journals uh, or two category publications which are accepted for our career group and otherwise. So this, uh, I hope all of you know that we have uh, two categories of journal that is a listed journal, uh, one and two, and uh, two is uh, Scopus and Robo Science, and one is uh, decided by our PGC. And so the crux of uh, all this uh, development is that we have to look our publication from a different angle, quality matters. So good uh, research is very important to give some quality output to the uh, public. Uh, wherever we are, whatever we do, if quality is not there, we will be obsolete very soon. So in this era of uh, globalization, everybody knows what uh, others are doing. We are exposing ourselves through our publications and through the internet. So we are more exposed to global audience also. So that's, that's why it is imperative on our part to look into the research uh, from a different angle. And uh, that's why this presentation is all about. 
So I'll just uh, share uh, the slides, whatever I have for you. Uh, is it visible to you? All of you are able to see it. If uh, somebody can just. Uh, so it is visible. Is it visible? Okay. Yes. Okay. You can, sir. You can, uh, I mean, yeah, make I'll, it. Yeah, I will start. Okay. So uh, the good research is the academic imperative. This is uh, the sharing of my experience. It's not about uh, the text, not about the methodology. It is all about uh, my experience, uh, the journey of 25 years, uh, what I have learned over the years. And uh, to some extent, I have tried my best to uh, publish in uh, good um, journals. Some of them have come up. Uh, though I am not fully satisfied with the publication I have, but uh, there is uh, no harm in keep on trying. So uh, whatever gathered, gathered experience I have, uh, those things I want to share so that if uh, there is something and that will be useful to you, then I will be rather happy. So uh, we'll just uh, think about uh, the good research. And what is a good research? What is a good research in our domain? Then uh, why good research is essential? And then how to do good research? Basically, the question is that how to harp on good research. And this is from practical experience point of view. Uh, we know that, uh, yes, research is uh, all about uh, talking about new things. Uh, we try to see new horizon of knowledge. Uh, we try to enter into a new domain of knowledge. Uh, all aspects of human life uh, we want to explore. And we want to explore uh, the truth. That means ultimate truth is our objective uh, to arrive at. And every researcher tries to reach a certain point and he claims that this is the ultimate. For him, particular context, that is the ultimate. And he says that this is the theory. So he wants or she wants to reach uh, the truth. That is one of the uh, motivation why we uh, also go for research. Uh, also, uh, with a good type of research, uh, we think about uh, a valid conclusion. And uh, valid conclusion uh, means uh, a conclusion based on certain principles. Uh, it is not only a simple conclusion, Certain principles are to be adhered to which we will talk about in detail. And then normally any research, any research uh, will help or uh, helps us in overall the human development. Maybe it, uh, in our domain, commerce, economics, and management, or any other domain, whatever the domain may be, all leads to human development. So research uh, is essential. We have to uh, again and again enter into a new field uh, or maybe the existing field we churn the existing knowledge to bring out something else so that is a continuous effort and we have to keep it up because we are human beings we want development of our uh, generation and the next generation so it is uh, a journey when you talk about good research it is a journey with new observation and conclusion and the journey is also new journey that means when you want uh, to uh, think doing something new that is wonderful research. Though research has certain parameters to be followed, which we will discuss in detail, but when we start a journey, a new journey with a new observation and conclusion, then it is called as good research. And uh, as a layman, everybody does it knowingly or unknowingly. Everybody does some sort of research in his life, in his private life, in public life. Everybody does some sort of research. And they also talk about some observation, some conclusion at certain point of time in their life. That yes, I have uh, this observation, I have this knowledge, I have this uh, theory, uh, I have this statement for you. So this type of we keep on doing online also. So for academicians or academy research, if we see the parameters, then we can think Three basic thing. One is it should be relevant. It should be socially relevant. Uh, some uh, relevant research uh, or some research uh, may not be socially relevant. What are also considered research, but what we are emphasizing here, it should be 
socially relevant. Because uh, if it is not socially relevant, what will happen? That in the process of doing research, we'll spend a lot of uh, resources, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy. And uh, ultimately, if that is not relevant, then it is just a futile exercise. That's why we have to think that it is socially relevant. It should improve the current process. When you talk about relevance, it should improve the current process, process of doing things, process of observation, process of writing, process of doing things. All these things come under the process. So that is one of the objectives. Social relevance means it should improve the current process. By improving the current process, we reduce resource consumption. That is the objective. Then it should be a new idea, if possible, a new idea can come up. Sometimes both happen, sometimes one of them happen. This is the first thing we should have in our mind. And second one is it should contribute to the policy and practice and methodology, if not policy and practice. So methodology is one of the very difficult things to contribute unless you are a very sound in a certain aspect contributing to a new methodology is definitely a big job. But when we do our research in domain like economics, commerce and management, normally what we do, we adopt methodology of others, other research, and we try to uh, see in the context of ours, maybe the context, regional context, local context, national context, or international context. So development of new methodology is a challenging task. We may not contribute to that. Sometimes we contribute. It's not that we do not contribute. Sometimes we can contribute to that, but it is difficult. But without policy contribution, it is really uh, not acceptable to a larger audience or global audience. So policy contribution is one of the most important criteria of a good resource. Then it should add to the existing stock of knowledge. Whatever knowledge we have, it should add. Add doesn't mean quantum. R means another dimension. R means a quality dimension. So you can think about how to R the existing stock of knowledge. It is not the number of papers we write, rather, whether out of all the papers, if one paper is giving something new, then this is an addition to the existing stock of knowledge. So these are the three things we should keep in mind in general while we are thinking about a good research. Then the obvious question, why good research is so important for us? As a human being, as I told you in the beginning, we need development, we need progress. We want to save natural and monetary resources, which is a prime reason right now, nature. We talk about climate, global warming, other things. Because if nature is intact, nature is natural, then we will be natural. Otherwise, we will also get destroyed. If we destroy nature, same thing will happen to us. So good research is imperative to save the nature. Obviously, we want to save a lot of resources so that the resource saved through good research can be utilized for the emancipation of the human beings which are not getting those resources. So there are two prong strategies uh, here. We have to save the nature, we have to save the resources. All resources can be translated into monetary resources. That's why I've written here monetary resources. Then, third thing is we are always inquisitive about something which is beyond our known territory, that is the unknown, un unknown territory. So, sometimes we try to explore. And we have to explore, unless we explore the unknown territory of knowledge, we cannot get new things. Take the example of internet through which we are interacting. 30 years before, nobody knew about this thing, or there was no knowledge about this internet possibility of sharing, sitting at Shillong, sharing with Mizoram, sharing with US, sharing with South India, sharing with North India. We never thought about that, but somebody, few people or many, they tried that how it is possible to reach out. So exploring the unknown territory of knowledge is also one of the dimension of good research. Yes, we spend a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of time 
when we will enter into unknown territory, but that is sometimes our presence. This is for overall human being or all. But for academicians like us, we have specific purpose. Why we do research or why we want to do research? The basic is very much there. We want to take off new assignments, we want promotion. It is it doesn't require any qualification. We want recognition in the institute, among the colleagues of the institute, and in the larger field of the academics, national level, international level, regional level. We want some recognition. That also drives us to do good research. When we keep on working, we also try to contribute to the policy making at various levels, maybe at local, national, international level, or regional level. So as an academician, our objective is always to contribute to the policy making of the nation or the state. So we also think in that way that good research is definitely necessary for us. Being an academician, we cannot just sit idle saying that I am teaching and that's all. Particularly those who are universities, those are scope to do research, they should always think about how they will contribute to the policy of their state or national investment. But sometimes we also do research, academicians also do a lot of research for self satisfaction. They try to know new things. They don't have any other objective what they do. Yes, truly, when you publish a good paper, it gives you a lot of satisfaction. A good paper and good journal is your recognition. You feel from inside. So this is also one of the things what academics want. So all these things which uh, I am going to start from here, the basics of good research. Yeah, some of the things you might have come across during the research. Many of you must have got your PhDs. Some of you must have gone through the entry coursework or entry. And some of you are doing research in the process of completing PhD. And some of the things which I am going to explain here, they are, may not be very new to you, but I will again re-emphasize on all of them to give you a better clarity and the practical prospect of each of these. So when we talk about basic of good research, this is particularly in our domain, or you can say in academics, methodologies must. We have to think about the perfect methodology so that we will arrive at a very good conclusion finally. So methodology should be very sound to begin with. That one should not ignore. Sometimes we compromise. Sometimes we do not give much emphasis on methodology. Methodology, as all of you know, method of doing things. Method of doing the research. And doing the research means to arrive at a valid conclusion. So how to begin, what to start with, how to take sample, how to consider the population, what type of uh, variables will be undertook, what will be the time frame for a particular study, what type of statistical tools and techniques will we use, how will we validate our conclusion, all these things are in methodology. Once your objective is clear, you think about a good methodology to arrive at a perfect conclusion. All your research output should have clarity. There should not be any confusion when you give a final statement to the audience, to the public, to the reader. Then you should, by yourself, 100% get convinced that this is the fact I'm going to tell. So when you are clear about your conclusion, then others will also get clear. So good research should think about less jargon, no confusion. 
all your conclusions should be valid. The validity of conclusion means it should be based on the analysis you have made, either qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis. It should not be your personal observation. It should be only based on the research. Then we can say that it is a valid conclusion. Plus, if you are working with the data, numerical data, figures, then the validity can be checked through appropriate statistical technique. We should know how to validate our result. Then only you would arrive at a very clear conclusion. So valid conclusion is very important. Sometimes people give some statement which is very sweeping in nature. Without doing any research inside the text, they just give one statement that this should be adopted, this is the policy conclusion, or this is the recommendation. Many recommendations we see in the thesis, those are not part of the research. They just give on the basis of the observation. Or they are there of their own. So these are all not valid conclusions. And good research, definitely, if you are following a proper methodology, your conclusion is so clear and valid, definitely it will generate interest among the readers. Once the reader reads it, he will find something new, or he will find something very robust, very interesting, so that he can carry forward, he can think of how to improve it, how to add something to it, how to do something else with this. That is also very important. The last thing is that we, in India particularly, this is not global context, it is Indian context. We have to utilize the minimum resource. We are limited with all the resources, money, time, and energy. Particularly when we do our PhD work, we should try to finish it in a reasonable time say maximum four to five years, not more than that. Because at this stage of yours, those are participating in this research of course, I assume that most of you are young, very young. So when you start doing research and you linger it, then your career prospect will not be very good. Rather, you have to see that how optimally I utilize my resources. So three to five years is the range between which one should finish the PhD research. So in Indian context, we have to think how to utilize the minimum resource. So to do this, we have to think some other way. We have to be very systematic, we have to be very scientific. Our approach should be very systematic so that we can utilize multiple efforts, multiple tasks, same thing we should not do again and again. Every task of research at every step, we should very cautiously proceed. Literature review, how to do literature review, what to start, where to end, that should be very clearly defined. Whatever methodology I use, it should be very clear to you. Whatever technique I use, that should be very clear to you. Then only you will save a lot of time. Otherwise, time will, you consume a lot of resources in form of time. Then come to the domain of social science, which we are belong. So we have to think that it should be a valuation to the existing stuff of knowledge. As I told you earlier, either in terms of literature or new methods. Because in social science, we do not develop any new product, physical product. We don't develop. We are not technician. We are not scientists. So our job is to add to the knowledge, existing knowledge, or adding something new in the methodology. Social science research, we should have good publication knowledge. That also is one of the criteria. Always we have to think. That rather should come in the beginning. If I will do this research, whether my research is publishable, if I will do it this way, my research is publishable or not. If I will adopt this methodology, whether my research is publishable or not. 
No, this is not the ultimate objective of research. Ultimate objective of research is that you are socially relevant. Your outcome is socially relevant. That is the ultimate objective. But in our context, when you come to academics and to our context, to the social science, our immediate concern is you should have good publication knowledge. And it should contribute to policy. There must be a dimension of contribution to policy. Unless your conclusion comes with a policy prescription and valid policy prescription on the basis of the analysis, nobody will accept. So the second point and third point they are interrelated. So these are some of the steps which uh, we'll discuss. All of you have already gone through these steps at a certain point of time. So we'll look into all these steps again from the practical point. How to do all these things in practice? Decide the area of research, developing research agenda, zeroing on an exact topic, deciding the methodology, collecting data and literature, analysis and value conclusion, the ultimate. So these are the things which we will follow in slides. First one is decide the area of research. As I understand, all these uh, participants belong to one of these areas, economics, finance, accounting, management, marketing, entrepreneurship in general. I hope all of you belong to one of these areas or some combination of the areas. So you have to think, but is area of research. Area is a broader term. It is very vast, but you belong to that area. You are in this area. Though the area is not yours, you can only say that area is mine, who will, who will have extensive research in that. But you are a part of that area. You are teaching economics, then you are from economics. If you teach finance and accounting, you are from finance and accounting, like that. So decide the area of research. Yes, sometimes the finance person enter into accounting. Sometimes the finance person enter into domain of economics. It is possible. Management areas are overlapping. Entrepreneurship is everywhere. So you have to decide. You can go for different areas. Uh, maybe at best two areas of research doing research, not more than that. I will not advise any of you to go for two areas of research at a time. One area is sufficient because everything is so vast, and we in India, in Northeast, we have enough scope to pick up any area and do research. So area is very vast. All these six areas, what is there, it is very area. Basically, the area is high. Entrepreneurship is everywhere. Marketing can be linked to entrepreneurship. Management can be linked. Accounting is also there. Finance is also there. Economics is also there. But sometimes we feel that entrepreneurship is a special area of research. But all these aspects, all these functional aspects are in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship encompasses everything. So there are basically high areas are here. Marketing, I have given some special emphasis because sometimes people feel that it should be given, it should be given a special attention. That's why most management has to they offer marketing special attention. And once you decide your area, you know that this is my area where I want to do research, then next step is what is the broader topic. What topic you want to think? Suppose I am in finance. I work on microfinance. So finance is my area. Microfinance is my broad topic. So this broader topic within that area is the second prong, second step. This broad topic decision depends on your personal interest and your competence. Sometimes you are very competent with technology. You know how to handle computer software. You are good econ econometrician. You are in finance. Then you can think about derivative market. Because derivative market trading data 
and derivative as such requires a lot of econometrics. So rather than working on small finance companies or rather than working on small business, doing some rudimentary statistical analysis, you will definitely be our uh, interest, so interest in derivative market, which require a lot of econometrics and techniques, statistical techniques. So if you are competent enough in econometrics, you can think about that type of topic. So the broader topic you have to decide. It depends on the personal interest and your public. So even if you don't have any competency, you have to log it. Writing skill is one of the competency, data analysis, econometrics, and software handling. All these four aspects are almost necessary for teachers like us. Writing skill is everywhere. We require across the board, we need good writing skill, no doubt. No need to explain it. Data analysis. Most of us, we deal with a lot of data, a lot of data. But that's why data analysis is one of the, we can say, must for us. Econometrics. Earlier days research when we were doing research in 30 years before, our econometrics was not there. Some statistical analysis were doing. Those are very rudimental statistical analysis. So nowadays, those are not going to work. We are into different model, model building, application of models, causal models, efficiency models, market models. So many types of models are coming up. Because if you go across international literature, you find that to justify your conclusion, to do your analysis, you have to have perfect model, perfect analysis. So econometrics is one type of essential for people, those who are dealing with data. Yes, those who are in management, they are doing peer management, they probably may not require a lot of econometrics. They can manage with simple statistics. But econometrics is coming slowly and slowly into our domain. Whether we are in economics or commerce, or other management areas we have to have. Software has become now one of the imperative things. We have to learn it or somebody has to teach us. Or we have to get help from somebody else. But if you do, then it is learning for you. It is a lifelong learning if you do. So better that you do and handle software of your own. So this is knowing your competency. If it is not there, we have to improve or learn from others. Global trend, most of the time, researchers they ignore. Particularly, I have seen many cases are coming. Those who are very outdated, the topics are very outdated. Still, people do research because getting PhD or degree of PhD is not uh, very important. You know the condition of getting a degree in India. It is not very, very difficult or very difficult or difficult at all to get PhD. But if you want to see that your PhD comes with good publication or your project comes with good publication, then we have to understand the global trend. What the international leader is these days. What are their interests? What type of research is going on? What is the future of these four five areas which we have discussed? If we can see some trend, then we can think about a broad topic. For example, I'll give one example here. In my domain of finance or the area of finance, a new trend is coming on impact finance. Many of you perhaps know it, impact finance. Earlier we didn't hear it. 
explain is because there was no concept like impact finance. Now, global investors are thinking about profit netting or return, but simultaneously, they also want that their investment brings some impact on the society. So they are trying to channelize their investment to such destinations, such sectors where societal impact, impact on climate, impact on governance are there. So impact investing is new broader topic. It is coming up. Similarly, one other trend is coming up behavioral finance in China. People are thinking about a new dimension of stock market investing. So behavioral finance is also one of the like this, we have to understand the global trend. Application of artificial intelligence in digital decision making. Then machine learning is another thing. Those who are technology subject, they understand this thing. They can also think about linking technology with finance. So this is also one of the topic. So we have to decide the product topic looking at the global trend. But the current trend is not enough. You have to also think that what will happen to this current trend? Will it head very quickly or there is a permanency or how long it will stay? Because every paper when published, you might have observed, it will keep citing it for some years, four, five, six, seven years or 10 years maximum. If it is a very good paper, if it is having some theoretical value, then the longevity is little more. Otherwise, if it is purely applicable application based, then citation will fail after a few years only. So we have to see that with the product topic we are choosing now, whether it has some future or not. In future, interest will be there among the academicians, among the practitioners, among the policymakers or not. If there will be no interest in this area in future, then your citation will also come down and which is one of the most important things which is now globally accepted. How many people, how many good journals, good authors have cited your work? So you have to visualize the future happens. So broader topic selection is very important and we should keep this in mind. Then come to the research. The topic which we are going to do. As I told you in the beginning, research is a new journey. So you begin something new. You have to get a new idea. How to get a new idea? You can only get new idea by reading, by There is no substitute for reading academic books. You have to read as many as paper possible. You have to have good command over literature. You should read very carefully and chronologically so that you would understand the history. Sometimes we read different papers of different time frame. That doesn't help. That the other things are time. We should very systematically approach the literature review part, which gives an idea about the exact topic which we do research. So unless you go chronologically, you cannot build your base. You can't understand properly. Once you start chronologically, things will be easy and easy. No area will be difficult for you. But you will just read a paper of 22, 20, 2022, a finance paper. Definitely, it will be very hard for you. Any derivative paper you could read right now, it will be very, very difficult. So, to understand the paper of 2022 publication of, from a good journal, you have to collect material related to that particular topic which we have published before that. Then arrange it chronologically. Get a historical view and historical development. So, that will help you a lot. So you have to build up fields 
and on that page you will stand. You will say that, yes, I know something, but history is very important. You cannot just read whatever is coming out of your mind. Once you start chronological reading, you will start remembering the author. That is very important. Big authors, contributors, theorists, very good journals, and very important publication date. These are some of the things which you will definitely remember. So, academic readings, reading of academic papers is very important. Apart from this published material from different journals and books, you have to read the general business and newspapers. This is for old people because we are in the domain of business. A policy making, economic policy making. So, all these delays by like economist, financial times, national and financial delays, these are very important. I opinion. We get new insights to the existing problem. You get to know new developments in this area if you read this. So, that also gives some idea that on which topic, exact topic, I will do my research. Those who are doing research in commerce, management, even in economics, always think that these are going to change the industry. Your recommendation will have some impact on the industry. And industry will know they are there for money. If they find a value in your research, and they will first see in what way this research time will help me to reduce my expenditure or to increase my return. So look for very important high monumental topics. Then at this step, at this particular stage, you can think about two, three alternate topics from your broader area. Suppose I am doing on impact investing. Now I will narrow down to two topics. Impact investing in India, impact investing and its implication in India, or impact investing in emerging economies like that. Or some pinpointed area. We have to narrow down to two three. So some of the readings what we have to do. I have just uh, brought some of the titles of good journals here in different domains. It is available on net. The purpose of showing that these are highly rated journals in its domain. For example, in economics, what are the journal of economics, journal of financial economics, journal of finance, econometrics, journal of literature, journal of political economics, these are all very big. Similarly, in finance, similarly in other accounting, management, marketing, and things. So, these are some of the good journals. Why I am saying this? You can read any paper, but try to understand that. You have to read those papers, those who matter to global areas. You will get a link from this global literature to your national literature and original literature. So unless you read these good journals, maybe few of them, maybe five or 10 of them, but in chronology, you will not find very good new topic. From these journals, good journals, you can only understand that these are the topics people are researching right now and publishing. And these are topics which have some potential in future also. So very good journals you should read in your domain. So download a few of them and chronologically read it on a particular topic. Now the final choice is the topic. What exact topic? What title? Unless you have a exact topic which is very relevant, your research output will not be So the topic or exact topic is very important. Topic can be very descriptive. 
तभी क्या नहीं जीव और इधर से जो डर में नहीं समता इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट समटाइम्स फ्रॉम द टॉपिक टू नो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इनसाइड तो इन सम ऑफ द टॉपिक वी गिव अ सेंस टू द रीडर व्हाट द रिसर्चर इज गोइंग टू टेल what is that is going to do inside suppose in a, in a topic like to find the relationship between x and y this means the topic is looking at exploring the relationship between x and y and finally they will identify the causal variable of x or causal variable of y or a topic which tell that to explore x and y explore x and y is not a exact topic but to find a relationship between x and y is a exact topic so we have to be very careful when we choose our title of our work maybe a phd work maybe a paper title or maybe a project we have to be very clear so from the extant literature now you will find once micro area which will be your new area of research always try to contest the existing this is challenging the conventional wisdom whatever people have told don't go by that you can think you can contest them contesting the existing wisdom may bring you a new approach may give you a new and original dimension so we challenge the existing the new thing will definitely come so these are some of the tests you have to ask is it new new means new field is it new because it is new data is it new because of methodology or new methodology so what is new in your research if there is nothing new just leave it is it going to be interesting is it going to appeal the masses at least the academy is it going to contribute the existing stock of knowledge is it going to change the manager's perception how you utilize it suppose you are in commerce you are in management you are in entrepreneurship you are doing some research and providing some policy prescription some recommendations is it going to change their perception is it going to raise controversy sometimes controversy is good because you are challenging the existing thing are you going to challenge the established theories if you are doing some fundamental research and bringing out something else is it going to challenge the established theory is very good then is it going to be feasible under such constraints this is very important as a student if you have a limited constraint whether it is going to be feasible or not some research require longer time lot of resources lot of money lot of manpower so we cannot undertake that individually some research can be only undertaken through project multiple project or big project joint project so we have to also think the constraints once the topic is decided their next is how to collect the data what type of data you want always think about global reach of your research as i told the global reach of the research is very important for publication point of view that doesn't mean that you will not do research on regional and local research or that doesn't help that also help but if we want very good publication in international journals our outcome should have some global reach because the journals international journals they always do who are going to read who are going to take your views who are going to utilize your conclusion or recommendation so some of the examples of this data which are available i am just giving examples here these are not limited you know better are the urban thing world bank or 
other parameters, the wrong parameters of the world, and F4. So you can think about data sources. Most of the finance research is based on segment data sources. Most of the research in banks is around segment data sources. So we are basically dealing with finance. But those who are dealing with management, entrepreneurship, they mostly deal with field surveillance, survey just data. So you have to think about that. And the data or the data source, data availability. This is very important. You should be very sure about this. If you are not sure, spend some time to understand where I should get this data. Can I get from a secondary source? Can I get through survey? Unless you are very sure, don't enter it. So you can try some new area, new data. The data should be authentic. You can think about a very large sample. People have done on small sample, but they could not publish. Now you think about a very large sample. Area may be same, topic may be same. And capital the global national market. So these are some of the things which you have to think while you call it your data. And then we'll come to the methodology part and before that we'll decide this has been what type of design we follow. Because research design varies from the topic. What I do, what you do, we may not use the same research. It provides a complete framework within which we will undertake our research. It helps you data collection, application tools, and technical skills. So you should know what type of research design you are going to follow. Mostly, we write exploratory. Exploratory is always less structured. There is no uh, very Visit way of defining what is exploratory. You keep on exploring, that can be done numerous ways. You can explore a topic by analyzing the existing thing in your own way, simple tables, simple numericals. You can explore. You can explore the topic with high, high econometrics also, the use of high economics, high order of economics. That is also possible. You can explore. So it is always less structured. So many people, those who are not very sure what they want to do, so they write it is expert research. So second category of design is the skip. We keep on trying to describe the existing thing, what, where, when, how. Just a speed to finish. Sometimes in management, we find this type of descriptive research. Yesterday, in management commerce, people many times take yesterday of course, yesterday for an institution, yesterday of the industries, all these things. Then causal relations. Some research design try to find out the cause of the problem, which is very common in finance research and in economics also. We try to find out what cause Y, what cause X, how the variables are related, are they important or not. So modeling, regression, all these things we try. Some research design, they are survey based research. We rely on the interviews, focus group discussion, and questionnaire to collect the data from the field. Then we try online. So, survey based design. 
meta analysis it will be higher order of analysis of the existing stock of knowledge journaling and finding the clue so meta analysis are not uh, very popular so because it requires a lot of uh, interest in that topic and a lot of dedication it is one type of you can say uh, fundamental type of research you can say but many of the cases we use this mixed method mixed method is very easy to use we can use descriptive for one chapter causal relationship for another chapter on the basis of interview another chapter so we mix in different chapter different types of research design are called so mixed method of research design also called then come to the journal methodology when you start thinking about methodology always think that there is a theory behind it because we are always doing a research which has a theory on the back of it we should know which on which theory we are building up our topic we have to link our research with the existing theory if there is no theory that means you are going to develop a new theory which is absolutely fantastic but absolutely difficult developing a new theory is fantastic thing. but it is very 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 difficult So that's why most of the research, our research in this domain, we always build up our case based on certain theories which are existing. Out there. So that you have to link always when you develop your literature, the literature about the linking of the theory of your topic should come up. So this is the background before you attempt to do methodology. This you should see. Then we think about the population sample. Most of the economics research, commerce, accounting, finance research, any entrepreneurship also, this population sample concept is always there. Yes, in case study we go for some other thing, but when you collect data, this population sample thing always comes. And I should not discuss much here that you know it. No need to always use complex tool or techniques. Your approach should suit the problem and convince you. The second part is very important. Whatever tools and techniques you are using, which will explain in methodology, finally, tools and techniques is the last component of the methodology. How you analyze data? What are the tools and techniques you are going to use? That is the last step. In the but it should. We convince you. You can present the data in two different ways, but what is convincing to a topic that is important to you? So you have to be careful about this. Then we'll think about analyzing. Hello. Hello, Dr. Lal. Dr. Lal, are you here? Hello. Uh, Professor Pati, anything? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Pati, anything? since I keep on talking, I just want uh, yeah. to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. listen or not. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're uh, um, curiously listening to you. Uh, I'm including, including me. Okay. <laughs> oh, you are there. Okay, I thought you. Were. So. Uh, so okay. Um, uh, please, please go. Uh, please go. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought you were not there, so I. No, no. no. Um, uh, I'm. I'm also enjoying. You know, your, your lecture. So. <laughs> we got some interaction in between. I asked them to post there. some questions. So I request participants. You, you, you oh, are. Yeah, free yeah. To, no, uh, you are free to ask some questions. You know, then it would be more interesting. Um, yeah, actually, uh, yeah. In between, that's why I just told in between if they can ask some questions, so it will be a little bit interactive. Mm. Mm. Actually, um, audio uh, they don't get uh, access to audio. Hmm. Mm. So I think uh, to, um, maybe last uh, um, fifteen uh, twenty minutes, uh, fifteen minutes uh, we can spare for uh, 
uh, answering some questions. Hmm? Meanwhile, we, we, they will post some questions in the chat box. Okay. Hmm? If they don't ask any questions, I will ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <it's all> right. <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> so, so then, uh, shall I proceed then? Yes, yes, please, yes, please. Yeah, we are at this methodology part. Uh, then uh, we are thinking about analyzing data. Once you are uh, um, equipped with uh, good methodology and which you uh, feel that this is appropriate for your research, then definitely you will start collecting data. And uh, the collection of data, I think uh, you know better, it should fit to your topic. You should not leave the data in the field, whatever data comes in your view, try to collect it. Because you will not get a second chance to go back to field and collect the data. Even if you are collecting from secondary source, don't leave anything. Try to collect as much as possible. I think this all of you know. After that, only you can go for screening. Which data is useful? Some data will be useful for your work right now, but some data will be useful when you write a paper supporting that, which you are not using your project, which you are not using your ESD right now, but they will be useful when you start writing the paper. When a reviewer comment will come, you have to support with some data. At that point of time, you cannot go back to field. It's absolutely not possible. Even if downloading data again and again from source or collecting data from a secondary source will not be possible also. So be careful that when you are collecting data, you are collecting the entire data, whatever is available, or collect whatever is available. Similarly, when you are collecting data through your questionnaire or schedule, or you are interviewing somebody, collect as much as possible. Don't leave anything. That has happened to me. That's why I'm sharing this things. In some of my research of scholars, they found a lot of difficulty. And because of that lack of data, sometimes good publication we could not do because the international journal, they asked for supporting data. And there is no time to go back to field and collect all the data again. It is costly, it is time consuming, and it will not possible. So we have to leave the publication. It happened to me with my scholar. That's why I always collect the data as much as possible. So when you start analyzing data after collection, try to write down the steps, what I am going to do, write on in a piece of paper. These are the steps I will follow. Master seed preparation. Then sub seed preparation. Then from the data, on the basis of variable identification of all the variables and grouping of this data, all these things you have to very carefully check out. This will help you to reduce your time and appropriately use the data. Otherwise, every time if you Go to your master seat, takes a lot of time. So once master seat is ready, out of that master seat, you should have sub seat, separate seat you should prepare. For each objective, you should outline how to approach with this data. So outlining the steps is very important. Note it down and write it down. So it will save a lot of your time. Sometimes we feel that complex techniques are very much essential. High order of econometrics is very essential. It's not always true. We have to use techniques which is relevant to our work. Data crunching doesn't give you a good result. You can apply hundreds of techniques available in SPSS or Stata or greater support. But all these Techniques are not useful to your work. You need only maybe one or two techniques. But that you should know. And that is only known when you read very, very good articles. When you go through very good journals, maybe similar topics you will come across, similar type of research you have come across. And from there, you gather 
the idea that this is the technique after proof for this type of observation or this observation has based on this type of technique. So for data analysis, appropriate technique is important, not complex, not very difficult. Similarly, software. Nowadays, software is available. We can use many software to analyze the data. Some software, they provide different type of analysis. So always try to use one of the appropriate software for your work. Because in all the software, some, uh, so all the regression, let us say, all the regression models are not found. In some software, all the types of uh, graphs are not found. You can use one or two software, two, three software also to find, it. but what will happen if uh, analysis is based on two different sets of software, there may be a little bit of conflict. The result may not be very accurate. If they will vary a little bit from one to other. So you should be very careful about that. One of the common mistakes what people do, they write a table or prepare a table, put in the text or the subject or chapter or in the paper. Again, they explain the same thing in a para, just below the table or out of the table. For once you are showing a table, a common man can, can understand but what are the main or broad thing inside the table that is visible? You need not to write again it in the text. So what you are supposed to write is what is not visible in the paper. What is the inherent meaning behind this data? That is the interpretation. You have to be very careful while explaining this thing. Sometimes we use a lot of graphs and charts, but we have to appropriately use it. Unnecessary charts and graphs just steal your time and paperwork or space. May not be very appropriate. Nowadays, sophisticated software have come where 3D charts are available, three dimensional charts. So three variables can be captured in one chart. So you can think about those type of charts and graphs. Traditional charts like line graph, historical graph, pie charts. These are all the things which have gone, though they are still coming, but people are thinking Presenting the data in different ways right now. So, new new dimensions are added to the charts and graphs. Explore them. Sometimes people try to explain the formula by writing the steps of the formula, just like in statistics book, how to compute correlation, they write the formula, how to compute regression, they write the formula. That don't do it. The final thing is definitely you arrive at a valid conclusion. I told you in the beginning, the new research is all about a new conclusion, but a valid conclusion. You cannot bring any personal bias to this conclusion. Whatever your data analysis says, that you can, on the basis of that, you should conclude. Whether it is positive, negative, that doesn't matter. You have to be ethically correct. Don't add your personal bias to the analysis. So go with the analysis and bring the conclusion. The conclusion when we write, it's very ambiguous and less certain. In the beginning also I just demand it. And statistical convincing. Most of the Students in our domain who use a lot of statistics. They can think about how this conclusion is statistical. But 
particularly when you test the hypothesis with hollow steps. And on the basis of certain step, finally we conclude, and that is called as statistical convincing by the conclusion. If your finding is unique, you are very lucky. If your statistically convincing valid conclusion is unique, then there is every possibility that you will get a good publication. You should highlight this in your existing mind. The unique finding of your study should appropriately come in your title of the paper. But if it is similar to the earlier findings, then this will be only considered as an incremental work, an additional work, not a new work. But even if you get the same finding, justify it, corroborate to the earlier best findings, and say that same thing also happened in India, same thing also happened in Northeast India as it is happening in the US and other countries. When the similar findings come again and again over a period of time, after some years of research, the theory will be developed. So there is nothing to worry if you get the same finding of the earlier of this. Slowly, 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 after 50 years or so, 100 years, you will find that the theory is coming up because all findings are same over the years. So either it is unique or similar, doesn't matter. The finding should be convincing, should be valid, should be bias free. Sometimes people give their Sweeping statement while giving their conclusion, which is not based on analysis. That is what I've heard. Finally, when you give the prescription, you have to be very careful who are the takers of your findings and how does the findings help policy. You have to write it. You cannot escape this part, particularly when you are thinking about a good publication. Policy contribution is must. If there is no substantial policy contribution, then the takers should be very few. So your publication potential depends on what type of policy contribution is coming out of the research. This is the ultimate test of your good research. Finally, you will think about communicating. Some research go for publication. Normally, when we do our research in PhD and PhD, or some research in post PhD, we think about publication. Sometimes we submit a report to the sponsor agency. After that, we publish. Sometimes we send prescription to government when it is a consultancy period. So communicating the outcome is also very important. It is a skill. You have to be very careful while communicating the outcome. That also you should seriously. So this is the last slide. Which uh, I have to say. Thank you very much. Now, if all are free to raise their hand and send some questions. Yes, Thank Dr. you Jitin. very much, uh, Professor Pati. Uh, really, really useful uh, because uh, though many uh, participants uh, um, are doctorates here, some of them are also. Uh, new supervisors. So it is not only useful for the PhD scholars uh, who are doing research, and uh, it is also useful for the 
uh, uh, I mean, postdoctoral uh, who are interested in doing postdoctoral research and also um, who, who are going to play a role of a, a role of a, a supervisor. Uh, and points are very clear and uh, um, practical and easy to understand. Um, so there are three questions. Um, Amutan uh, is asking how to avoid errors while analyzing data. That is one question. Another question from uh, uh, P. Senthil Kumar, hypothesis must or not in a good research paper? Is hypothesis uh, is a must or not? That is his question. And uh, Parmasivan, Dr. Parmasivan is asking one question. There are a lot of studies, research coming out, but they decide uh, what is the best study in it, how to decide maybe. The question is like this. How to decide uh, the quality research when there are so many studies? I think that is the, these are the three questions. One is uh, how to avoid errors uh, while analyzing data. Second one, about the hypothesis, is it a must in a research paper? And third one is uh, how to identify quality publication. Uh, yes, uh, I'll just take up one after another. Mm. The first one is avoiding hazard. You see, most important hazard we come across uh, in data collection or data Excel is redundancy. Some of the data is redundant, but that redundancy should not be uh, taken seriously uh, at the point of collection of data. Whatever data you are getting, keep go on collecting. Yes, at the time of analysis, if I will find that some data are redundant, but that redundancy at certain point of time while you are doing research may be useful. That redundant data may be useful at later stage. So it is very difficult to say whether it is hazard, redundancy is hazard or not when data is collected. So you should not be very worried about the size of the data or the volume of the data you are collecting. Collect whatever is possible. Another hazard we come across with data that outlays. Outlays are abnormal data which uh, we come across. So to bring these outlays to normal level is very important. Uh, you know that there are different methods how to remove this uh, outlays, either you exclude these outlays or you standardize them. So that uh, also one of the hazards we come across. So outlays should be treated. That can be possible through statistics also. There are certain statistical methods through which outlays can be treated. This is, uh, I think, what is common hazard people come across while dealing with the data. One is the redundancy, that is quantity. Another is uh, outlay. But sometimes also hazard in the form of uh, less of data. And if that is the situation, then you are in big trouble. Because for analyzing certain thing, if at the tag end of your research work, you are in depth of data, then it, it is a big hazard for you. So in the beginning, whatever data you are getting, try to please collect it. You may not use it at a certain point of time, at not at now, but it will be useful at certain other point of time in the future. I think these are the some of the things uh, so far hazard. So the second one is hypothesis. Whether hypothesis is a must or not, it is controversial. In most of the research where you believe that hypothesis is a must, something I have to prove because some observations are already there in the literature and literature is very clear about those observations, then you go for hypothesis. Otherwise, there is no, no need to go for hypothesis always. But in quantitative research, what I have found over the years, most of the good researchers, they are developing hypothesis from the existing literature. They first categorize the literature on thematic basis. And after that, they bring out one hypothesis on each scale 
and they try to prove it or disprove it. Hypothesis has become a way of life in most of the research where quantitative data is used. But it is not a must or data. Then another was uh, how to, uh, if uh, I'm forgetting the question, how to decide. Can anybody for sure? What is the third question? Can you please? Yes, anybody can. Uh, what is the third question? So I can see one question here. Reliability test for stock prices uh, may not be necessary always. Stock prices are very uh, reliable data as it is, it is there, it is there. Mostly when you go for field survey, personal observation data, questionnaire data, reliability test is very important. Otherwise, stock price data reliability test is not very important. Another question is here is writing a book chapter equivalent to writing a paper in general, it is absolutely not. Yes, in some of the books which are very high order with a very big uh, publication house, they also follow the same rigor uh, as it is a journal, but they are not the same. Book chapter and writing a journal paper is not the same. It is not equivalent. Sometimes even book chapter writing is also better than a journal paper. There is no such principle that which is good or which is good. It depends on what type of publication house, what type of reviewers referring their room. Yes, please. Any other question? Any other question? Yes, sir. Any other question? Dr. Jyoti Kumar? Hello. 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 Yes, Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, some network issue on my head. Uh, I'm joining from my uh, phone. Okay. So, have you answered the question? Uh, yeah, yeah, I tried the last question how to decide uh, what the last question I just forgot. Uh, um, and I have. Uh, I think it is about. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, identify quality uh, publication, something, some. Uh, oh, oh, yes, 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 quality publication. How to decide what is a quality publication? There are many studies. There are many studies. How to how to spot out the quality publication? That yeah, that's why actually when I started uh, in the beginning, I told you that when you start your research on a topic, please go to top rated journals and uh, try to concentrate on few of them. There are very many quality publications in many journals, but uh, there is no criteria to see that this is more of quality and that is less of quality. So one of the objective criteria is that you talk for a journal, you see if you can download some of the papers in your area from those journals uh, that you can consider as top rated, uh, very quali good quality journal. That is the one of the yardstick you can follow. Otherwise, it's very difficult to say that what is quality is not quality. Even there are some small journals are there, but they have very good quality papers also. Okay. Yes. So one question from my side, um, which is more difficult in Indian universities, getting a good supervisor or getting a good scholar? Uh, frankly speaking, getting a good scholar is uh, uh, as difficult uh, as getting a supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> that is my experience. So, uh, in Indian context, because the uh, research interest is uh, not uh, in high in India. So, it happens with both supervisor as well as the scholar also. Everybody wants a shortcut actually. These days, shortcut is the method 
to reach uh, or to achieve success. So that's why the research interest is going down. So both are equally difficult side. What I think, right? <laughs> Both are equal. So good research would happen when um, um, both, the, um, both the people meet. Huh? <laughs> a good, I mean, a passionate, uh, um, the, um, both, both, both should have a pass, yeah, passion for have, research. Yes, yes. Both then, should you know, have good a passion for research. Yes, Otherwise, yes, yes. Uh, nothing complete or good is coming out. Yeah, some comments also um, there, and uh, they really liked our. Uh, um, your topic, it is very big topic one way, but the way in, your approach is very simple and very fundamental uh, uh, truth uh, came out, out of... Uh, Actually, these are my experiences, real... so it is uh, my own language. Yes, I have yes, not tried to yes, bring yes. any text here. So this is yes, the thing yes. I did. So probably it has appealed to our uh, students or participants. So thank you, um, Professor Pati. No, only a passionate teacher like you um, uh, could give this type of lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for patients listening. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So we can we can close now. Uh, today's uh, um, um, we can call uh, dear part. So you leave it. You leave now. Happy weekend. And uh, also productive because have to focus on uh, the element, the seminar uh, paper um, given by us. So please focus on your uh, uh, research paper. Okay. And uh, happy weekend to all of you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.